Welcome to part two, our second update here today. Today being Monday, March 23rd. We're a little bit over time. It's past our usual 4.30 or thereabouts time. But we did have a, an excellent update from Robin Delarone a little bit earlier. Today we have more news. So we'll get right down to it. And we'll start off as uh, we have been for the most part with the Commissioner of Public Safety, Mr. Lloyd Phillips. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in once again for um, our daily update. Well, today we have um, some, uh, I guess, some more significant news to, to share with the community and update on some of the uh, latest uh, directives in which we have to uh, be issuing uh, today. Well, first of all, I just want to you know, mention that I had several discussions you know, over the past uh, week, for that matter, but uh, even today, uh, you know, people asking uh, questions uh, and wanting clarity on, on some of the directives that are being issued uh, you know, regarding uh, how it impacts on, on cigarette stores, how it impacts on other businesses, and how it impacts their lives in general. And, and you know, we've been working you know, tirelessly to get these answers for individuals, but you know, they're, they're, they're coming in you know, very fast. And that's why we think these updates are, are very good to try to get at least uh, the general information out there and then work to get some more details because every time a, a, a decision is made, we understand there's a, a domino effect and impact and that it causes you no know, throughout the community. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're certainly not no, if we haven't got back to you with, with your, one of your questions, you know, you're certainly not being ignored. It's just that we have to reach out to other um, uh, partnerships, you know, without, throughout the community or throughout the province for that matter, to try to seek some answers for you. So sometimes these things take time. And keep in mind, most places are down to essential services only, so that adds to the delay in us getting um, some of the information uh, back to you. Well, Unfortunately, uh, what uh, I'm about to talk about will maybe uh, answer some of the questions that people have, but at the same time, it, uh, it, it might create some more questions. Uh, and we will work very hard to answer those questions to you. Uh, now, mind you, some, one of the questions that, that we had are not only for Ganawage. The whole the province of Quebec and the whole world, for that matter, are, are asking many of the same questions that, that you are asking. Because there is no playbook to what we're doing. Uh, you know, we're in a very unique situation in terms of Ganawage versus other First Nations as we are right in the middle of a metropolitan area. Uh, and you know, so a lot of the impacts that impact the Montreal area also impact us. You know, we have much more infrastructure and businesses than, than, than most other uh, First Nations. So what we, we were watching today is a um, messaging that was coming out of Quebec uh, as well as doing our own internal assessments and um, looking at some, again, some of the latest uh, uh, information coming out of, um, on the medical side. First of all, what I want to say is um, not to be an alarmist, but the overall situation uh, in our area has, has gotten worse. Uh, despite measures that have been taken, you know, the virus continues to um, move and 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 people be you no know, people more and more people are being diagnosed with the with the coronavirus it's not only in quebec but you no know, also around throughout canada no it doesn't mean the measures are not working uh we can't be discouraged by that uh because you know if we weren't taking measures you no know, we may have been in a different place as we speak today but because of the measures that are being employed in Ganawage and Quebec and, and, and throughout Canada has, has stemmed some of the, the, the spread of the virus, but it has not completely stopped it. So the uh, Quebec government today announced that they are going to be closing down the um, rest of the non-essential businesses within the province, again, in an effort to uh, minimize the spread of the virus. Uh, the COVID, Ganawage COVID Task Force met this afternoon to look at uh, what Quebec has done, uh, did an assessment of what is um, the impacts on our community. And if we took that additional measure, 
uh, and was it feasible? The short answer is yes, it is. So what we're going to be moving forward from here is all additional non-essential uh, businesses are to start preparing for closure. Uh, this should be take place as quickly as possible and more information will follow. But this is something that we feel is another vital component uh, in stemming the spread of the virus. So all non-essential uh, businesses are to start preparing for closure. And also for clarity, we had some of the uh, cigarette um, factories asking if, if, if they could do some cleanup and, and finish putting away their, their equipment and, and finishing what they got to do to properly close up. Uh, they, they brought that question to the task force and we did agree, certainly, you know, in order to preserve your business and not have waste, you know, you have to take measures to ensure you're properly uh, closing up your business. So that is, is not, a, um, uh, not, not, not a concern. Uh, but again, as a directive, you no, know, they, they are to remain closed. So, what this means is, all remaining non-essential businesses, contractors, and people working in in the blue-collar area should cease their activities as quickly as possible. Uh, this also will impact upon the uh, public works and capital projects within the community who have already been down to um, a, a essential services only. They have to reassess on what they, uh, and reprioritize and reassess the work that has to take place immediately, immediately uh, within the community to ensure we're maintaining the proper, proper infrastructure uh, in, in our community. Uh, with that, I also want to remind the people that the, the council uh, is working on a financial assistance package uh, which is near, uh, nearly uh, ready. It'll be announced very soon. Um, and I think it's something that would at least alleviate a lot of the pressure on community members who are directly impacted uh, by the decisions being made um, by the COVID task force. Uh, I also want to mention that there is a uh, business support aspect to that, which I'll let the council discuss that further, but there is me measures being taken to uh, minimize and assist as much as possible the impacts to local businesses, uh, as well as discussions going on uh, with, the, with the case populaire, uh, discussions with the uh, MCK housing to ensure that the minimal impact to any contractors in terms of um, uh, commitments they made to finish a house, for example, in a certain time frame, and obviously now that that will not be the case. So we don't want to make we want to make sure that uh, the impacts on you are 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 very minimal, if not or if non-existent. So a lot of work has to take place, um, and that's going to take place over the next few days. So more and more information uh, will be coming forward uh, with the directives that are happening with the in Quebec. The supply lines for supplies for, for, for lumber and, and uh, stuff of that nature, construction type materials, would likely be uh, minimized over the coming days regardless. I want to reassure the people as well that uh, the KSS Emergency Food Services is up and running. It's ramping up its services to ensure that people who require assistance for food uh, in the community, uh, it is being uh, developed and more information will be coming, but if people are impacted, uh, financially and require assistance for food and essentials, there will be uh, something available for you. Uh, again, that's KSCS's responsibility and they will have more information for you in, in the next day or so. Um, at this point in time, there, there is no uh, anticipation of uh, supply lines being cut for, for essential services such as food and gas and, and, and such. Um, but we also want to make sure at the same time that we have a proper amount of um, uh, stock or reserves of food uh, located within our community to give us that uh, extra sense of security. Again, which has currently been happening throughout the past few days and, and is ongoing as we speak. Now, the goal you know, of these closures is a public health goal. It's not an attack by no means whatsoever on the business community, uh, tobacco industry, or anybody who is directly impacted you know, by these decisions. It's purely based upon public health recommendations to ensure that we're doing as much as we possibly can to, to slow the spread of the virus uh, in and around our community. Uh, I just want to make that you know, perfectly clear. 
And like I said to many people over the past few days, we know there's consequences. We know people are, are, are feeling the pinch and, and, and it's, you're not alone. You no, know, the whole community is, is feeling this and in uh, and, and different ways. And for further clarity, talking about essential services, uh, what that includes is anywhere that sells food. You have, you have the grocery stores, obviously, are very essential to our community. The convenience stores are essential for people to be able to go down the road and uh, pick up a uh, loaf of bread and, and, and other, other essentials. Uh, the uh, pharmacies, gas stations, those are things that we require just to run the day-to-day -day operations of, of the community. People we rely on them to ensure that they're, that they're available to them. So those are deemed to be uh, essential services. Uh, one comment that we received several times today was about clarity on convenience stores uh, selling tobacco products. Uh, what we are asking the Ganawage convenience stores and Ganawage uh, uh, grocery, grocery stores, no, tobacco is for local purposes only. No, it's asking them to only sell to locals. We don't want to have people uh, coming into the community who don't have uh, this tier to simply to, to, uh, to purchase tobacco. Uh, that was one of the reasons why that decision was made. So we're asking that, that whatever you, you have remain you know, for our community. With that said, uh, I'll, I'll stop there. I'll come back in just a few minutes. Uh, I have uh, Lisa Westaway with me here uh, this afternoon to give you some very important updates from uh, Cattery Memorial Hospital. All right, thank you very much, Lloyd. And just uh, a note, uh, one of the comments that came in, a question actually asked about what about the restaurants? And the restaurants have been closed, uh, you know, for the past few days. But for those who, um, and there are many people who don't cook or can't cook, and if you want to order out, those restaurants are still available. There's takeout and, uh, and delivery. Uh, so, uh, you know, call your favorite restaurant if they're open they'll deliver or you can pick it up. So that's just for clarity there. All right, in the meantime, it's uh, time to bring in Lisa Westaway. She's the Executive Director and Spokesperson for the Cattery Memorial Hospital Centre. Good afternoon. Um, so I'm here today to advise you that there is positive COVID-19 uh, within the Cadu Memorial Hospital Centre. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea about what happens when there is a positive case, uh, public health has the responsibility to do the full investigation. So in our case, it's public health Montérégie. Um, they also complete the list of all the possible contacts um, and then they also uh, contact contact directly the people who uh, may be impacted by this. So they will um, make all decisions about whether somebody should be contacted, whether they should be in self-isolation, and therefore um, you will receive a call directly uh, the, from public health, and the investigation is happening as we speak. Um, and until we have a better understanding of the impact of, uh, of uh, this new development, we're implementing immediate measures in order to ensure the safety of staff, of uh, clients, and of course of our most uh, vulnerable uh, population. So until further notice, outpatient services is closed as well as our blood lab. Um, and again, it's just until the investigation is complete so we can really have a better understanding of the impact of uh, of this uh, new development and uh, you will receive if you have appointments scheduled you'll receive calls directly our physicians are still present they'll still be at work and they'll be doing uh, teleconference uh, interviews with you and or referring you to an appropriate clinic if that is the case and if that's what's needed um, this news is not a surprise to us and if you've been listening to us day after day, it's not a surprise to you either. And we've been uh, pushing and you've been putting in place measures every day in order to protect yourselves and protect your loved ones. We ask that you continue to do this. We. Um, we want to particularly point out that 70-year-olds and over are very much at risk and therefore it is all of our collective responsibility to continue to self-isolate, to continue to wash our hands, to continue to avoid touching our faces um, and, to, uh, and to really educate um, our elders that they should be staying home, that they should be in their home, they should not be going out and as much as possible we should be able, we should be helping 
helping them. Um, we, I, we can say we, we don't have all the details, but we could say with, you know, with very uh, good, uh, almost 100% certainty that um, we were, are going to see many more positive cases uh, in the in the Gunawagi community very shortly. Um, we uh, we're quite certain of that. So it's important that these measures really be that you strictly follow them. Um, being self isolation. Um, and social distancing is about being with the people who you live with in your household, not your cousin uh, coming over. So we've talked about this before, but it's just little reminders um, that we want to limit. We want to shop Gunawage. We want to limit our ins and outs. We want to stay close to home as much as possible. We want to uh, limit meetings of, of more than three people at all times. Um, and when we do have to be with three people, we want to maintain our um, our six feet distance um, we're I'm really asking you not to give up this is not unexpected this is expected we don't give up we're ready for this um, we need to stay and fight we need to keep ahead of this and I really um, I've I've seen so many messages and I've seen uh, received so many messages as well over the last while and I know that we are ready for this fight. I believe in our community, I believe in our strength and as a collective, as a group, as a community we are going to fight this together. We'll continue to keep you updated as to uh, developments as we go on but please be ready there will be more cases as we move forward and please again do not give up. We fight this fight together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. There will be uh, certainly a lot of questions that will be uh, coming up. Some of them are being asked now. So uh, over the next 24 hours or so, uh, we know that um, there will be some preparations to make sure that all of the uh, proper questions or all the questions are answered properly. Uh, this is a, a very trying and difficult time. And as uh, Lisa said, we'll all work together to get through it. In the meantime, there are more updates to give, and the Chief Peacekeeper, Dwayne Zachary, now joins us on our update. Dwayne. Thank you. Good evening, Gunawage. Um, in light of the information that uh, Lisa has provided us, more than ever, it's important for us to follow along and continue to practice all of the safe measures, right? Um, we're asking for people to continue to social distance, right? It's, it's imperative, you know? I mean, Lisa had mentioned that, that people are not complying and we're seeing it too. We're getting numerous calls from people in the community stating that they can see that their neighbors are having people over. You know, you need to social distance. You need to ensure that only the people in your household are in the household. It's not a time where you invite, you know, family and friends and, and neighbors over. You have to social distance. It's imperative. And in light of the uh, information that Lisa gave that, that COVID-19 is now in our community, it's positive, right? This is just a start. Think about it this way. We're at the beginning and it's gonna come. We can't stop this virus from coming to our community, but we can minimize the impact it has if each and every one of you follows the safe information that you're getting, right? Practice makes perfect. So you really have to do it. It's, it's not a joke. It's not something to laugh about. You know, the Gunawage peacekeepers are here to, to provide service to the community. We want to help you. We're doing everything in our power to keep you safe, to keep you secure. But it's important that people in our community help us. We're looking to you to help us. We need your vigilance. We need you to call us when you need help. We need you to call us when you see things that are not right in light of the COVID-19 emergency that we have in our community. We need your cooperation. And when I say cooperation, you know, I, I, I want to mention that, that I'm really pleased by um, the tobacco industry and all of the measures that they put in place. I'm really pleased by their cooperation in closing down the factories and closing the stores. It's imperative that we do this for the safety and security of our community, right? I want everyone to be safe, so you need to follow all of the safety measures. You have to wash your hands. You have to practice safe distances. You know, everybody's saying six feet, two meters. Make sure you do it. It's, imp it's important. 
We're going to get through this, but we don't know how long it's going to take. And at this point, some of you may think, well, COVID-19 is here. Some people have tested positive. What's the point? Well, the point is we need to ensure this for everyone, right? For our elders, for our youth. We don't want this to take hold in our community in such a way that it's devastating. So these measures are put in place to safeguard you, to safeguard me, to safeguard everyone within the territory. So that way we can stave it off as much as possible. We can't stop it. I keep saying that because I want people to know it cannot be stopped, but we can minimize the damage that it does to our community. I've taken lots of messages from other communities and the other communities are asking us, what are we doing? How are we doing it? And what, you know, what's the process? People are looking at us because we're, we're leaders in this area. And if we can all pull together and cooperate, we will be able to get through this. I'm asking you all to be calm, to stay in your homes, not to go out, practice the safe distance, practice it. I'm saying it over and over and over because I want it to stick, all right? Peacekeepers are going to be out there. They're going to be patrolling. We're checking the stores. We're checking to see who's in the community. We want to make sure that it's safe. We want to limit the number of people who are leaving the territory and coming into the territory, right? And that's for us to do. And we're looking for your cooperation to communicate with us and let us know when you see things that don't seem right so we can respond to your, to your issues. This is a partnership between the Gunawage peacekeepers and Gunawage, right? We need to make this partnership and we need to continue to work together. Um, if you need things and you want to speak to me, I'm here every single day. I'm, I'm open to having conversations with people, right? We need to make sure that we are safe. It's imperative for, for the safety and security of our community. So please, everyone, stay safe. Now, Dwayne, I will wash my hands as soon as we're done doing this here. Uh, some final comments from uh, Lloyd Phillips as we uh, get ready to close off this uh, very eventful COVID-19 task force update. Lloyd. Thank you, Joe. Well, just to um, reiterate a few points and uh, thank you, Dwayne and Lisa, for, for the information. Uh, one, th one thing that, uh, that we need to be perfectly clear on regarding the positive taste, uh, tests in the community for COVID-19. Uh, the hospital is 100% certain that these cases have nothing to do with the doctor who tested positive that was here uh, a few weeks back. So they are totally unrelated between the doctor who was here a few weeks ago and, and, and these positive cases. They could say that with 100% certainty. So I just want to make sure that that's perfectly clear uh, to our community. So these, these are our are, are new cases. Uh, no, Dwayne, Dwayne said it all, you know, in terms of, you no, know, we're in this as a partnership with the community. Uh, you know, we have uh, many people who are dedicated to seeing this through. Uh, you know, this is, this is not a, a setback. It's, 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 it's us time to uh, just look at the mirror and, and say, well, what else can I do as a community? But again, as an individual, uh, you know, as much, as, much as, as we can put out directives and, and make recommendations, if people are not going to abide by them, uh, and, and then the whole system is, is going gonna, is gonna to be impacted. As it was said yesterday, a good example is you know, a family should, should work as a unit. Uh, if one of the family members are not abiding by uh, the distancing, uh, are doing stuff that's, that's not uh, um, recommended, and then they come back home and now they're jeopardizing the, you know, the entire family, the, the entire unit. So that's, that's I think, some of the take-home messages uh, for today. Uh, I know, like I said, there are going to be many questions uh, on the next uh, you know, 12 hours or so. Uh, further clarity will be issued. Tomorrow, uh, these are these were um, late breaking type of things that had to happen, and because of our commitment to be keep the community informed, you know we are here today making these uh, these announcements, and uh, we'll we'll be in touch uh, tomorrow, uh, either throughout the afternoon or certainly at 4 p.m. And I thank you very much, Lloyd, and thank you also to Lisa Westaway and Dwayne Zachary for today's updates. Uh, once again, we can't stop the virus from coming, but working as a community, we can limit and manage 
its spread as much as is humanly possible. One last word, we, uh, over the past couple of days, there were announcements about the tobacco industry. Uh, did speak to, I personally actually had a couple of uh, uh, store owners call me and ask that we double up on the messaging to get people outside to understand that they shouldn't be coming here and knocking on the doors and looking for cigarettes. And as uh, one of the things that was done right away was a message is being put up on the electronic billboards on the 30, on the 132 and the 138 to tell people in French and in English that tobacco products are not for sale at this time. So at this time, everyone, take care. Take care of yourselves and your families, and we shall see you tomorrow uh, for our next update. Niao